One of the potentials for illegal drug traffic is the school. Here, the connection can be found with these peddlers of misery who prey on the unwary, the uninformed, the curious, the thrill-seekers. Most young people will continue through life as normal, responsible citizens. Others, the shunted and unloved, the unguided, the seekers of thrills and kicks are candidates for the slave world of lifelong drug addiction. But no one is amused. How does it happen? Where does it stop? What are the signs? The pattern is generally the same. Take a lack of responsibility, the inability to make right choices, add to it ignorance and indifference, and top it off with a desire for escapism and kicks. The sum total is then conceivably found in the Bennies, the Reefer, the Pop Needle. Take John Scott. He'd be the first to laugh at the thought of his being hooked. Sure, before the last exam, he took a couple of bennies to pep him up, but so what? Everybody knows a couple can't do any harm. What he should have known is that not only are barbiturates dangerous to his nervous system, but they destroy the inner resources he has now to overcome the obstacles of daily life. But he's too busy with his girl, his car, his sports. The little problems he has don't seem too important. He knows he's failing in English and on the borderline in math, but he's not really worried. He knows he'll be okay on the next exam. Sure, he'd be willing to come for extra instruction on Saturday, but Saturday's his practice day. He's doing well in track, and he feels he will do better. With more training and practice, he might even get to represent the school in the state finals. But word has come down that his grades aren't too good. Unless he pulls them out, he can be put off the team. A normal enough problem with a normal enough solution. Hit the books a little harder, get a little help, and pull them up. It will mean giving up some fun and weekends, but he knows he can do it. If necessary, he can cram a few days before the exam and even pep himself up on Benny's. He handled them before, and he knows where to draw the line. He knows he'll never go beyond that step. But someone else knows John has taken his first step toward drugs. Someone who is willing to help him take the second and the third and the fourth steps where eventually he becomes a member of that tight society of drug addicts. To John, it's a of to John, the party is swinging. Just the thing he needs to pep him up. The stage is set, the principal players are in position, the curtain is up. John doesn't realize it, but he has just been cast as the star fall guy in a real-life tragedy. the excitement of Helen and several beers have taken effect. Inhibition and caution are forgotten. When Helen suggests they have a few more beers, he's all for it. Why not? Everyone else is doing it. To refuse would be square, and that terrible label must be avoided at all costs. Besides, he's never been high on it before, and he never will. He can handle the stuff. Besides, he's never been high on it The only trouble is he can't handle so much. Under the influence of the beer, Helen comes through as much more friendly. He's flattered by her attentions and her interest in him. If he could see her arms, scarred by the needle marks, he would know she's a hire. If he could see her police record, he would know she works for Pete. Pete and Helen know their parts well. They've been through it before, and they know the time is right. Throw out the sucker bait. It's time for the next step. The next step is the garage. 
There, some of the gang are really blasted. That's where the real action is. Come on and take a look. Take a trip from Squaresville. Live a little and see what it's like for yourself. The senses are dulled just enough to be reckless. Helen, the music, the beer, the promise of excitement, press in on it. Now, curiosity has to be satisfied. Why not? It can't do any harm to look. This is the real action, the pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. Outside the boundaries of their phony world of kicks is the ever-present possibility of discovery. This must be avoided at all costs, for discovery brings with it the penalties of society. Shame, arrest, prison. So destroy the evidence, leave not a trace, burn it in paper track. That way they can deny possessing the illegal marijuana. They can say the flaming can is part of a game. They can lie, they can swear. This time the gang's lucky. It's not the law, or discovery, or problems. It's just their supplier, Pete, with his number one kick, and a new guy looking for kicks. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. She and Helen know their parts well. You know she works for Pete. She and Helen know their parts well. They've been The next step is the garage. There, some of the gang are really blasted. That's where the real next step is the garage. Come on and take a look. There, some take of the a gang trip from Squaresville. That's where the real action is. Come yourself. on and take a look. Take a trip from Just Squaresville. Just enough to be reckless. Tell them see what it's like for yourself. Take a look. Promise of excitement. Just enough to be reckless. Now, curiosity. Tell them to be satisfied. Promise of excitement. Can't do it. Now, curiosity has to be satisfied. Why not? It can't do any harm to look. This is the real Shake this square world and blast off for kicks with.